In case you're not aware, there are two very different movies that came out recently that have become quite a joke on the internet. One of them has a bunch of bright colors, while the other has atom bomb tests. I'm going to combine bright colors with an atom bomb test and put it inside this bell jar. I started things off by cleaning the jar because it was pretty dusty. There was a large sticker on this side which gave me quite a bit of trouble trying to get it off. After a lot of picking and scraping, I finally was able to use some isopropyl alcohol to get rid of the rest of the sticky stuff. The idea for this build was to have a Barbie pink mushroom cloud that takes up the entirety of this dome. So I got the measurements of the dome and then I set that aside till the end. The first thing to figure out on the base was the positioning of the battery housing. I'll be using two double A's to give the lights their power. I grabbed a pencil to mark the position. When I flipped the base over, I ran into another sticker, which was a blessing. But after that was gone, I was able to pencil the shape that I needed. To drill the holes, I used my rotary tool in a drill press stand. I made sure everything was tight and properly aligned, and it was time to drill some holes. Once the holes had been drilled, I set the drill press aside and I cut the rest of the shape out with a jigsaw. Of course I also needed a way to turn this explosion on and off, so I added a switch to the bottom as well. There was just enough room on the bottom to route a hole without breaking through the top. It's a very ugly job, but the shape and the size are correct and it's also hidden on the bottom of the base, so I'm not too worried about it. After getting the switch figured out, it was time to prep the wires. I clipped and stripped the red wire coming from the batteries, then I got my soldering iron out and I waited for it to heat up. Once it was nice and hot, I connected the red wire from the battery to the switch and then from the switch to where the filaments will be. I also glued the battery housing into position. I now had a source that would supply the lights with power, but I needed a way to mount the lights, so I built a wire frame. I drilled some holes in the base using my pin vise and a bit that was just the right size to pressure fit some metal rods that I had on hand. I pushed the rods in and made sure that they were nice and secure. I didn't want the rods to be wobbling around and bumping into each other, causing a short circuit, so I made a little spacer out of wood, which is a non-conductive material unless it's wet which is good because I don't plan on getting it wet. I drilled two holes spaced out the same width as the rods with that same pin vise and bit. And then I threaded the rods through those holes and I clipped off the excess. For the large lower horizontal ring of the mushroom cloud frame, I bent a rod into an appropriately sized hoop. I soldered the ends together and then I soldered a rod across the middle to connect it to one of the vertical rods. I clipped off the excess from the sides of the cross rod and then I soldered the hoop into position. I made the center rod slightly off center on purpose so that when I connected it to one of the vertical rods it would be centered to the base. Next I made a second, smaller ring to be the top connection point for the mushroom cloud nuke frame, and I soldered that into position as well. I then connected the wires from the battery housing to the base of the vertical rods, which meant at this point if I touched the ends of a filament to either side of the metal frame, it should light up, if everything was wired correctly. If not, it might cause nuclear fission. Okay, we're good to go. I'll be using these LED noodles because they're nice and bright. I also have the right colors to create a Barbie pink explosion. I soldered all the filaments to the rings with the positive ends at the top, the negatives at the bottom, and I coiled one final filament around the stem of the mushroom off camera. The next step was to take this empty frame and fill it with life. And by life, I mean polyester fiber fill. This sugar-free cotton candy alternative makes great padding for things like pillows and stuffed animals. And along those same lines, it makes a relatively convincing explosion uh, in the right light. 
I laid down a foundation of fluff on the base and gently scorched the edges as I went. This is a new trick that I've started using to get rid of the loose fibers and strands that subtract from the realism of the cloud effect. I have to be pretty careful while doing this because it does burn up pretty quick. I then filled the interior of the cloud and wrapped some fluff around the stem of the mushroom. I glued everything together using hot glue and I used that scorching method on the upper part of the cloud as well. I added smaller, denser clumps of fiber fill strategically around the first layer to create a more realistic looking cloud formation. When I was happy with the look of the cloud, it was time to turn this cumulonimbus into a cumulonimbus flammogenitus. In other words, I didn't want it to look like a cloud, I wanted it to look like an explosion. And in order to do that, you have to darken all the points furthest from the light source. I did that with an airbrush. The last thing to do was to put the glass dome back on top, and after that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.